Is Chris Pratt the worst Chris? It should just be this. Is Chris Pratt the worst? Kind of. Who would ever search that? Why have so many people searched for this question that it's now a prominent autocomplete prediction? You ever wonder how Google autocomplete works? No? Maybe when you're awake at 3 a.m. and you can't sleep? It could have been a passing thought. Did I lock the door? How do fish fu- Is my trauma perhaps caused by that one moment I peed my pants on the school field trip in front of my crush? How does Google autocomplete work? Autocomplete hasn't always been around, but now we don't even think about it. YouTube, Google, Spotify, Bing, Yahoo, Amazon, Instagram, Twitter. Gmail now scarily predicts what I'm about to say. And even Google Drive has an autocomplete feature. Just on Google alone, they claim to save over 200 years of typing time per day thanks to the autocomplete feature. Yes, per day, because that's exactly what it's designed to do. Google Autocomplete is not only useful for saving time, but also people who went to fancy business school for marketing may use it to research things like keyword suggestions, learning about user intent, whatever that means. I saw that phrase on a bunch of different websites and I'm assuming it to be business jargon. And essentially digital marketers use Autocomplete to find out what people are actively searching for so they can better meet customer needs and adjust their marketing strategy accordingly to fit what people are searching for. You can't even tell I'm reading the script through these sunglasses. Digital marketers use Google Trends for this too, which lets you see the popularity of keywords and phrases over time. For those of us that didn't go to fancy business school, Autocomplete is cool for those funny wired videos. Is Chris Pratt dead? <laughs> to see company reputation, which is something I hadn't thought of before. If you search for a restaurant and one of the first autocomplete suggestions is rats or kitchen nightmares, you might wanna think twice about if you really wanna go there and cause you to look deeper into your life decisions. And for us YouTubers, you can use autocomplete to make content around what people are searching for. I used to do this and it works. If you're making Premiere Pro tutorials and you wanna see what tutorials people are looking for but maybe aren't really finding, just type Premiere Pro how to in the YouTube search bar and you've got your next 10 video ideas that are almost sure to pop up in someone's search feed. You can become the answer. There's also even a new built-in feature in YouTube Studio that allows you to accomplish this same thing. So based on that, you've probably begun to form your own hypothesis on how Google Autocomplete might work. It's common sense to think the more that people search something, the more it'll show up in Autocomplete. And that's correct. But wait, there's more. So let's get into the meat and potatoes like it's Thanksgiving dinner, and hopefully by the end of it you'll be so stuffed with information and knowledge you'll have to undo your belt buckle and enter a food coma. Google autocomplete predictions are based on these things according to Google and other websites that sounded smart. Overall trending topics, overall popularity, your search history, your location, and your set language on Google. That's why, if I search for something, it'll probably show me different autocomplete predictions than it would show you. And you know what else I can find on Google? Your address, phone number, full legal name, the high school you went to, your emails. Your yeah, I don't know why Google allows data brokers to thrive so well in the search results, but that's my personal gripe with the US privacy laws. But luckily the sponsor of today's video, Aura, helps protect you, whereas the internet as a whole does not. Data brokers love to share all your personal information that you've ever put online for just anyone who wants to see it. And Aura literally removes all your information from those websites. I was actually spending hours every day trying to get my information off of those websites websites, some of which make the opt-out link almost impossible to find. And Aura opted me out of over 50 data broker and people search websites within seconds of me signing up. I was also impressed when I saw they opted me out of junk mail, credit and insurance solicitations, and telemarketing lists. It monitors up to 10 of your emails to see if your data or passwords has been involved in a data breach in the past and in real time. But it found a password of mine that was breached from a website I signed up to like years ago and forgot about, which was wild. It also has one of the fastest just VPNs I've ever used, and my friends know that I've used a lot of them. There's also a password manager, credit card monitoring, dark web and identity theft monitoring. I literally upgraded to the family plan so I could have my entire family on Aura. And I love how it has almost every internet safety tool you need in one place, so you're not paying for seven different services. So you can use the QR code on the screen, or the, I don't know where I put it, or go to Aura.com slash Gabby Bell for 14 days free and let Aura do the hard work of protecting your personal information online. So now let's 
let's see how each of these factors marry each other to create a Google autocomplete result. Yeah, yeah. So overall trending topics, you can probably guess what this is. It's trending topics that may come in short bursts, like your dad. Trends change over time, so that's why if you start to type what does in Google search bar, you'll find what does Riz mean? And I guarantee you, you won't find this autocomplete prediction three years from now. The same way you won't find what does YOLO mean in the autocomplete predictions in 2023. Because everyone already knows that it means you only subscribe to Gabby Bell once. And trending searches are different than the overall popularity of a search query. Yeah, yeah. This one is more long-term popularity. What does Riz mean is short-lived, but what does CVS stand for is forever. Typically, according to Google, trending searches may be prioritized in Google Autocomplete over the long-term popularity of a search query. Query? Am I pronouncing that right? Google likes to live in the moment. So Google apparently doesn't use your search history for Google autocomplete in the way that I thought it did. I was under the impression that Google used my browsing habits and previous searches to tailor personalized autocomplete predictions for me, and that there were different autocomplete results for every person based on their past searches. But I guess that's not true from what I read. Autocomplete as a whole is based on information from the masses. So the way search history comes into play with autocomplete is a lot simpler than I had assumed. I assumed. I made an yeah, yeah. ass out of me and me. So all the search history is, is the past searches highlighted in purple. That's literally it. That's part of autocomplete. I was surprised that they didn't use my browsing data to tailor my autocomplete results because they literally use all that data about me to feed me nonstop ads about diapers and baby stuff, even though I don't have a child because I bought toddler gifts a few times for my nephew. Do I have to explain this part? Google uses your location to get you the only Trader Joe's in your city with seemingly the smallest parking lot. And it'll get you that result in English or whatever your main language on Google is. So that's really all autocomplete is. An amalgamation of machine learning algor algorithmization, algorithmiz, who wrote this? Huh, that's a word, nice. An amalgamation of machine learning algorithmization of search queries that millions of people feed it each day. But wait, there's more. You didn't really think we'd go through this whole video without mentioning an AI machine learning algorithm overlord, did you? At the start of my research, the algorithm was about as mysterious as my ex-wife. I don't have an ex-wife. So we covered the surface basic information that Autocomplete uses to create predictions, but how does it know what to put there? How does it know what you might want to search? Google uses an algorithm called RankBrain, which is based on another algorithm called Google Hummingbird to better understand user intent of a search query. It turns a string of keywords into understanding what you're asking. They use RankBrain to autocomplete, but also to help rank the actual search results you see when you press enter. Enter. Historically, Google has ignored stop words in your searches, like and, the, and without, but sometimes those words are crucial to understanding exactly what you are trying to find. Please find me a boyfriend. Please, I'm begging you, please, please, Google, please, Google, please. Google's undergone several major algorithmic changes throughout the years, but this update is considered to be one of the most important because it started to better interpret the relationship between words. Can it understand and interpret my ex-wife though? <laughs> Google had not seen 15% of the queries used. That's good. And as such, had no context for them, nor past analytics to determine if results were good or bad at satisfying the user's intent. So they introduced RankBrain in 2015 to help with that. And now RankBrain is involved in every search query. I don't like that word. It's starting to not sound like a word. Ow. For example, if you looked up furry convention, Google would see the word furry and the word convention and sometimes might not return the most satisfying results for you. But with RankBrain, Google now sees furry convention as one entity that means something more than two random words strung together, if that makes sense. Google Hummingbird also optimized the use of cinnamon. Cin cin not cinnamons! Google Hummingbird also optimized the use of synonyms in search because it's understanding what your intent is. So if you instead 
instead searched meet up for furries, it might give you similar results to furry convention. And now you know the meaning behind you searching for a grand old time. The goal of Hummingbird and Rank Brain was to make Google autocomplete and search feel more human. AI, AI is taking over. over. Rank Brain learns what to fill in autocomplete using machine learning. It's fed batches of past searches and learns by matching search results, whatever that means. So this helps with autocomplete accuracy, but also with search result accuracy. You might remember if you searched something on Google back in the day, a relevant crap would show up and I can't say, I can't say the S word anymore. I have to say crap. I sound like a first grade teacher. Irrelevant crap would show up in the search results due to keyword stuffing. So now we're getting into a little bit of SEO, which means search engine optimization, which is exactly what it sounds like it is. Web developers and designers would game the Google search algorithm by stuffing keyword text in their websites at like the bottom where you couldn't see it and they would change the text color to the background color. So all those keywords would still get picked up by Google and push their link to the top of the search results. The new Google algorithms that we just talked about made this practice obsolete. This was such a common thing for people to do that even I learned in my college HTML class not to do this because Google has learned to shadow ban these links. But obviously scammers got smarter because you can still find a plethora of advertised or top organic links leading to scam website helplines if your grandma misspells nor an antivirus phone number into Google. Plus, if I'm looking for free Robux, almost every ad is a scam. One thing Google really needs to improve on across all Google products is their ad system needs to filter for potential scams because the amount of weird scammy ads I've seen on YouTube and Google is just too much. Like you're telling me you can't, you can't handle this. It's a thumbnail of Mr. Beast and it says, everyone that visits our page gets $1,000. Cool, well, it's a link to a super sketchy looking website. And it's also linked in the description. Under the ads, you can tell the algorithm does does try to filter out the bad scam websites, like it's including Roblox's official website forum. And there's even a .edu page on here and a .gov page, but there are still a plethora of scammy links too. Plus those official websites are just scammers who've taken advantage of a legit URL to post their scams. Obviously Google hasn't disclosed exactly how their search algorithms work because if they did, then Bing might actually have a chance at being a decent search engine. So everything I said is a bit oversimplified to how it works, both for the digestibility of this Thanksgiving dinner and because we just don't know more. And what do I look like, a, a scholar, a fucking a programmer. So I found this really interesting and weird and I wanted to mention it. On almost every source I was reading, they made sure to make it a point to mention that it's not Google auto suggest, no, no, no. It's a prediction. So autocomplete started as an experimental feature in 2004 and was fully introduced four years later as Google suggest and was renamed autocomplete in 2010. So if you find yourself calling it Google auto suggest, that's because it, it was was at one point. It it was. They're so weird about it because they're not trying to suggest that you search for anything specifically. They're just trying to make a prediction on what you're about to search. This is because they don't want to get caught with their pants down suggesting that you search for something offensive or bad or, or naughty, 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 naughty. Which brings us to... Google won't autocomplete really bad stuff, which I will not show you an example of, ironically because Google's algorithm can see it and restrict this video. They see everything. Ahem. Google removes predictions that are sexually explicit and do not cover or relate to medical, scientific, or education topics. Hateful predictions against groups and individuals based on race, religion, sexuality, or other demographics. Violent or harmful predictions. Dangerous and harmful activity. And they remove predictions that might be spam closely associated with piracy or in compliance with copyright laws. Which is why you might see this blurb at the bottom of the screen when you're looking for Shrek 2 free online because you didn't buy the DVD like I did, saying some search results have been removed due to copyright law, blah, 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 who cares? Lastly, this is something I was personally wondering, if Google indexes or sees the dark web. The short answer is no. 
Basically, the deep and dark web contain private information like medical, legal, and financial records that are hidden behind logins and passwords, which blocks search engines from indexing it. That makes sense. And the other stuff is just straight up illegal. And it just wouldn't look good for Google to say, Hey, sure. Sell your liver on the black market to buy the NVIDIA RTX A6000. You have my blessing. There's no incentive for Google to index the dark web, considering they hypothetically could. Like, I could end the video right now. But I won't, because I need to tell you to follow my Instagram and subscribe to this channel.